What is going on everybody? My name is Nathan and this is Salty Productions. Now today I would like to show you my white black EDH deck that I built. Uh, for those of you familiar with my work, I am an avid deck builder in Magic the Gathering, specifically Commander, and what I like to do is make Commander decks around the $100 to $125 mark. Now, this deck in particular is a little bit more expensive at $160 as of the recording of this video, uh, but if you are... Um, if you're watching this in the future and you go out and check this deck list, this price will most likely have fallen uh, by the time you actually uh, see what the updated price is. As these older cards cycle out a little bit more, um, Shadows of Innistrad is releasing in uh, a month or two, I think. So maybe just as these cards generally get older, the price very slowly falls. Uh, but if we go ahead and look at some of the mass statistics here that Tapped Out so graciously offers, uh, first we'll check out the curve of this deck. This curve is looking very beautiful. Oh, that is just such a perfect curve for Commander because the 4 drops and 5 drops are at the peak of the graph here, and that's typically what I like to do. You have your 6, 7, and 8 converted mana cost um, spells ready to finish out the game for you, and your 2s and 3s supporting you in the early game. Now, we have uh, if we just take a look at the card type breakdown here, we have 35 lands, as you can see right here. Um, that's not a lot for Commander. It's, it's a little bit below average. Typically, I like to run about 37 to 38. But this 35 land is supported by four ramp cards. Um, so you have effectively 39 mana producing cards in the deck, uh, which is sufficient for this sort of curve. And then you have um, 18 creatures and a whole bunch of other stuff. Now, the creatures tend to be the supporting roles uh, in this deck. This other instant sorcery enchantment, these are how you're going to actually close out your games. Um, and then we have a, a mostly uh, black uh, card cost here, but uh, we have just enough white to actually make sure that we have some white mana so you shouldn't be running into any sort of color deficiencies in this deck now if we take a look at the just really short description that i wrote here basically the goal of this deck is to poke your opponents for life and then if they happen to turn their aggro against you you keep the board clear by using a variety of board wipes as we see right here we have eight board wipes which is a decent amount for a commander deck um, usually i pack about three or four and we also have various protection cards right here so we have cards like crawl space sphere of safety Windborn Muse, um, I actually would rather have Ghostly Prison in here than Windborn Muse because um, it is a little bit cheaper and has pretty much the same effect, but Ghostly Prison has actually risen to about $17 in price, which is ridiculous. I used to use that card when it was actually around um, just $1 or $2, so I don't know why that has risen in the past year or so. So we'll go ahead and take a look at Karlov first as we dive into the various cards here. Um, I'm just sort of going to walk you through all of the individual cards of the deck, um, maybe suggest some uh, replacements if you're not feeling um, a certain card or two, but um, Karlov here is a good pilot of this deck because um, he is, well, he makes a good commander, mostly because of his utility and because he's so cheap. So he can be recurred um, a few times before he's really unplayable. So Karlov is a 2-2 two, two for 2, and the 2 mana is amazing. Again, you can recur him several times if he dies. Whenever you gain life, put 2 on 1 counters on him. Um, that's great because it makes him a fatty because you are going to be gaining a ton of life in this deck. So um, that makes him very useful as just a big fatty on the board. Otherwise, you can pay to, uh, a, a, white, a white and a black, excuse me, to remove six 1-1 one -one counters from him and to exile target creature. So if you don't want to use Karlov as a fatty and there is a particularly threatening uh, threat on the board, I suppose, then what you can do is actually just uh, make him basically a 2-2 two -two again or maybe a 4-4. Four -four and exile that target creature. Gets around indestructible, very nice. So, that makes him a good pilot. Um, we'll start out with the mana base here. I'm just going to sort of 
cover each of the cards in these sections here to just sort of walk you through the flavor of the deck. So 35 lands, as I said before, um, we have some nice dual lands here. The pain lands are definitely not, there's actually only one pain land, but this is not that big of a deal because um, you're going to be gaining a lot of life, so don't be afraid to use that white black um, effect of Caves of Quilos. Command Tower, Evolving Wilds, Isolated Chapel, all of these are just very nice uh, lands to either thin your deck and provide you with those dual colors. Um, Orzhova, the Church of Deals, very expensive effect, but I figured I would include it anyway, um, just because you never know when that will actually be useful. And having a land that produces one colorless is not that bad. There's not that many times where you actually be strapped for uh, white black mana. Scoured Barons. Tainted Field is actually uh, really nice. Temple of Silence, Scry Effect, Terramorphic Expanse, Vault of the Archangel. Um, so not too much detail with the lands there because, hey, they're lands. Um, so let's start out with what you're going to be killing your opponents with. Um, taxes is the flavor of this deck. So Blood Chief Ascension is going to be a great card if you draw it early. At the beginning of each end step, if an opponent lost two or more life this turn, which will happen very often because you will be facilitating that, you may put a you may put a quest counter on Blood Chief Ascension. Whenever a card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, so that's discarding cards going to the um, Cards going to the graveyard, etc., etc., happens all the time. This effect will trigger often. If Blood Chief Ascension has three or more quest counters on it, you may have that player lose two life. If you do, gain two life. So this is the general theme of the deck. You're poking your opponents for two, one, one, two, maybe three or four life apiece, and you're gaining that back. Um, so that's it's it's a really fun mechanic if you're into that sort of just whole needling um, play style. But Blood Chief Ascension is is a very good um, representation of what this deck sets out to accomplish. Defiant Blood Lord is going to act essentially as um, I think it's either Exquisite Sang uh, let's see Sanguine Bond let's see yeah so that's going to act as pretty much a different Sanguine Bond. So Defiant Blood Lord seven cost four five flyer whenever you gain life target opponent loses that much life that's going to be a great effect. Of course, the classic Grey Merchant. Now, you aren't going to have a ton of devotion to black, um, but I think you can amass probably four or maybe five devotion by the time you drop Grey Merchant here. And um, that is going to be just a very good effect. You get a 2-4 body plus for the extra three or four mana, um, you then get that, that life loss effect. Kukushu is the most expensive card in this deck. Um, if you're looking to make this deck... A little bit cheaper. Kukushu is probably the first uh, card that I would cut. Um, so a 6 cost 5-5 five, five flyer, that would normally be amazing in itself. But what makes this card so amazing is that when this card dies, each opponent loses 5 life. And you gain life equal to the life. You gain life equal to the life loss this way. So that means when this card dies, your opponents are each taking 5 and you're gaining 15. Now, what's great is that that, I mean, that effect is great in itself. But when you combine it with some of these cards, such as... Um, uh, wound reflection. So at the end of each turn, each opponent loses life equal to the life, lo to life lost. He or she lost this turn. So what that essentially says is that your opponents are taking double damage. Now, when you happen to have something like a wound reflection on the board, um, in combination with a Kakushu death, then each opponent is taking 10 and you are gaining 30 life. Now, even in Commander, that is a ridiculous amount of life, um, and that just makes this a great card. Obnixilis is a great uh, card for his plus two ability. Each opponent loses one life. You gain life equal to life loss this way. Otherwise, his minus two is great if you really need some bodies on the board, and losing that two life is not that big of a deal. Uh, Obzadok Goes Council is a nice recurring hasty 5-5 five five with that extra ping effect. Palace Siege, you're probably going to want to go for Dragons. Um, otherwise, if you happen to have a lot of creature cards in your graveyard, then you can go with Cons. But otherwise, Dragons would be the main effect I was looking at for this card. Polluted Bonds is going to be another ping effect. Subversion is um, another basically kind of similar to Polluted Bonds, except that this is guaranteed to happen at the beginning of your upkeep. Each opponent loses one life. 
you gain life because of the life loss this way. Viscopa Guild Mage is nice because um, it is a 2-2 body, not very threatening, so it's not that big of a target, but it's second ability for 3. Whenever you gain life, whenever you gain life this turn, each opponent loses that much life. So if you combine that with a card such as uh, Beacon of Immortality, double target player's life total. I actually looked up the rules for this, and doubling your life total does count as life gain. So, if you happen to even gain um, 30 life off of this, which is very unlikely, it's probably going to be more like 40 or 50, um, then using the second ability here on Viscopa Guildmage is going to actually pretty much kill everybody. So that's insane. I figured I had to include that card. Um... So these are the types of cards that you're going to be pinging your opponents with. Um, there are others here, but let me just cover other categories. Card draw is fairly unex unexciting. A lot of these are just the black card draw cards with uh, loss of life effects. So you have Read the Bones, Sign in Blood, uh, Siphon Mind is a nice black staple, Underworld Connections, and then Well of Lost Dreams is good for that extra life gain. It really fits this deck well. Um, so... You are going to have to stave off your opponents, and to do that, you're going to use a variety of board wipes and spot removal. So, um, Austere Command is, I think, the second most expensive card in the deck. You can actually sort by price up here if you want to look at that. But Austere Command is so expensive because it is so uh, versatile. Destroy all artifacts, destroy all enchantments, destroy all creatures with command of card. Convert a mana cost 3 or less, or convert a mana cost 4 or greater. So, that means, excuse me, that means that this card can target any sort of deck that your opponents might be running. Whether it's tokens, um, whether it's fatties, whether it's a lot of artifacts, whether it's a lot of enchantments, this card can pop them all. Day of Judgment is a nice cheap board wipe. Deadly Tempest is um, a nice... Very nice to target a token player. Um, usually there's one of those in the player group when I play Magic with my friends. Um, but otherwise, it's just nice for that loss of life effect. And Hostilities is a nice 5 cost board wipe. Uh, nothing too special about it. But um, if your opponents happen to be running a lot of enchantments or equipment, um, and Hostilities is going to be great for that permanence attached to creatures effect. Merciless Eviction is very versatile and has the Exile effect. Necromantic Selection, very expensive board wipe, but you, what the card text says is essentially destroy all creatures on the board, and you get the most powerful creature that you need uh, at the moment. So you get to choose whatever creature was destroyed and put it on the battlefield under your control. That is very good value in my opinion, um, even though it costs 7. Planar Outburst is a 5 cost, destroy all non-line creatures. I included this card over just a regular 5 cost board wipe because there are other ones that exist. Because it's very versatile in the late game, if you have the mana available for the Awaken effect, then that's also nice. Um, so just a nice late game board wipe if you need it. Otherwise, you can just hit that 5 mana red button to just wipe it without the Awaken effect. Wrath of God is going to be another 4 cost uh, board wipe. So another... Again, like if you want to make this de this deck a little bit cheaper, you can replace um, Wrath of God with something like um, Crux of Fate, I believe, is the 5 cost board wipe. Um, so stuff like that. But... Um, for now, I just felt like Wrath of God was worth it to include. Spot Removal, um, the most expensive card in the deck is actually Ashen Rider, if you don't count the X cost cards. Um, so that's going to be very nice Spot Removal, plus the 5-5 Flyer body is nice. Um, is it worth 8 mana? I'm not entirely sure, but um, I guess this would be one of the cards to consider cutting if you're having a little bit more trouble in the early game. Um, and you really can't survive until the late game. Uh, Go for the Throat is a classic removal black card. Destroy target non artifact creature for two. Mortify, it can hit both a creature and an enchantment, which is great. Swords to Plowshares, classic again. And Utter End for exiling anything that you so desire. <clears throat> 
Um, let's see, what other support cards? Oh, I suppose while I was talking about the mana base, I should talk about the ramp cards. So we have four ramp cards here. Um, you have Burnished Heart, which is pretty standard. Um, and the main reason why I include Burnished Heart, other than a card like um, uh, Thought Vessel or... Uh, Hedron Archive or something like that is because Burnished Heart actually combos really well with, with uh, Sun Titan here if you can actually have Burnished Heart in the graveyard and then play Sun Titan. Recurring a Burnished Heart is very, very um, uh, good for you because you just are generating so much land. It's ridiculous. You have your classic Soul Ring, your classic Solemn Samila Crumb for that extra uh, land ramp and the, um, and the dying effect. And then one Power Stone, and if anything, if you're running into issues with card draw, I would maybe replace one Power Stone with something like a Hedron Archive um, for that. Um, in case you, in the late game, you need extra cards, you can sacrifice the Hedron Archive to draw two cards, which is nice. Um, and it's only costing you one more up front. <clears throat> So, I guess while we're talking about board wipes and removal and how you're going to keep your opponents from killing you, because uh, because you have so much life, we'll also talk about these protection cards. So, Crawl Space is pretty much an EDH staple with me at this point. Um, no more than two creatures can attack you each combat. That is so insanely good, um, and it really deflects a lot of aggro. It does become the number one target for any sort of artifact removal, so that be careful about that. Uh, Sphere of Safety... Creatures can attack you uh, or a planet target you control unless their controller pays X for each of those creatures, where X is the number of enchantments you control. So, um, this deck does actually have quite a few enchantments, so chances are you're going to have maybe two enchantments out in addition to Sphere of Safety. So, paying, you know, even just two colors for each of those creatures you control, that's still pretty much a ghostly prison effect, which is very good in itself. And then Windborn Muse um, is a 2-3 flyer body with the ghostly prison effect as well so that is uh, pretty good so <clears throat> I suppose let's see what else um, okay non creature removal so if your opponents are rocking some really scary artifacts or enchantments you have aura of silence um, this card is very versatile because it has the upfront costing more effect and you can sacrifice it at any time per, at the speed of an instant to destroy target artifact or enchantment. So that's going to be very versatile. Um, Core Sanctifiers would be a card that I actually might replace with a more efficient artifact or enchantment removal. The reason why I, uh, why I have them in here is because um, while it costs effectively 4 mana to play this card... Um, and to actually destroy a target artifact or enchantment, you get the 2 3 body. <clears throat> and if anything, I just wanted more bodies in the deck to actually stop any sort of creatures that might be coming at me. So, Core Sanctifier is not the most efficient, but the body is nice to have. Return to Dust is another commander staple. Exile effectively two artifacts or enchantments. You're pretty much always going to want to cast that during your main phase. And Tarashi's Grasp is destroy target artifact or enchantment, you gain life equal to its converted mana cost. So another life gain effect that you can combo with something like Sanguine Bond, um, Defiant Bloodlord, etc. Um, okay, I guess <laughs> I'm doing these a little bit out of order, but uh, if we actually move from um, one one similar, or some, some, some cards that are similar to this text category is the Extort category. So Blind Obedience is a really really good card in commander because it is only a two cost artifacts and creatures your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped now that is an insane effect for only two mana um, effectively means that your opponents can't block with creatures that they just played which means that you can get through for a lot of damage now I'm not saying that um, your creatures are going to be your main source of damage but um, it if anything it helps your opponents kill each other um, and also it has the extort effect. So extort is going to be another way with which you can poke your opponents for life and then gain life yourself. 
Cryptcast is a nice staple for mono black decks, but I threw it in here as well for that extra uh, black ramp and the extort effect, and only being effectively it's a 2 2 for 4, even if you don't make use of any of the other abilities, which you absolutely will. But um, if anything, it's just a 2 2 body for 4, which is not that bad. Uh, Pontiff of Blight, 6 cost 2 7, so this guy is going to be sticking around for a while. Uh, extort and other creatures you control have extort, so you can get off hopefully a bunch of extort um, triggers with this guy on your side. Um, and we'll talk about life gain. So El El Hamrit's archive, I believe is how you pronounce this card. If you gain life, you gain twice that much life instead. That's insane. Um, if you would draw a card, except the first one you draw in each of your turns, draw two cards instead. So effectively, for five colorless, you're getting uh, double the life gain that you would possibly have. And if you would play a spell to draw um, cards, then draw twice those amounts of cards. That's awesome. This card is amazing. <laughs> Beacon of Immortality, 6 cost, double target player's life total, and shuffle this into your library. Um, this is an insane card. It, absolutely crazy. Um, it costs... It costs about $7, though, it looks like. So, if you're looking to make the deck a little bit cheaper, maybe consider cutting Beacon of Immortality. Excuse me, Beacon of Immortality. But, um, otherwise, this card has an insane effect. Um, the only danger with this card is that it immediately makes you a target for... Um, to Well, for your opponents to target you, essentially. So, you have to be careful about that. Um, but, the effects of the card are still just crazy. Crazy because this is how you gain 50 life in a single turn. Boon Reflection if you'd gain life, you gain twice that much life instead. Exquisite Blood whenever an opponent loses life, you gain that much life. That is, um, Exquisite Blood is good, but what actually is crazy is Sanguine Bond. So whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. So all of these life gain effects, um, you can actually be essentially pinging your opponents for life. So this is more of a burn card, if anything. Um, it, you really can just hit your opponents for maybe 5 to 10 damage per turn, which is crazy. Rock's Faith Mender, 4 cost, 1, 5. So a nice, a nice solid body to defend creatures with with lifelink. If you gain life, you gain twice that much life instead. Wall of Reverence, 4 cost, 1, 6. Again, a nice body to defend uh, against your opponents. Defender Flying, at the beginning of your end step, you may gain life equal to the power of target creature you control. So, um, if anything, you can actually target Wall of Reverence if you have no other creatures, but hopefully you'll, you'll also have one, at least one other creature uh, on the board, such as a Sun Titan. Actually, so let's move on to the Beaters, as long as I'm um, in this category. Creatures like the Sun Titan, Sarah Avatar, it's insane if you can get off a Wall of Reverence trigger on Sarah Avatar. Um, so let's actually, I'll just start from the top here. Divinity of Pride is a 5 cost, effectively an 8-8 eight, eight flyer with lifelink for 5. That makes this card crazy. Roiling Horror is an interesting card actually, and it combos really well with Karlov because you have a lot of life gain triggers. Rolling Horse power and toughness are each equal to your life total minus the life total of an opponent with the most life. Um, and you can suspend it for X. X with three black. Whenever a time counter is removed from Rolling Horror, while it's removed from the game, target player loses one life and you gain one life. So, um, average scenario is that you're at 50 life and the next highest opponent is at, we'll say, 35. Um, that's pretty modest. Now, that makes this card a 15-15, and its extra suspend effect can actually make it so that you can target that opponent with the most amount of life to increase the power and toughness of Roiling Horror. This, cre this creature is massive. Uh, so is Sarah Avatar, actually. So a 7 cost, power and toughness are each equal to your life total. So this is, on average, going to be around a 50-50, and whenever Sarah Avatar is put into a graveyard from anywhere, shuffle it into its owner's library. So, um, that's going to be recurring maybe in your deck if you shuffle it uh, and it comes back to the top. And the classic Sun Titan, a staple in all white decks. Um, I'm not sure that I need much explaining here because Sun Titan is so common. 
Okay, let's see. We've covered all of this, all of this. Um, what we have left are the miss cards, the burn cards, and the tutors. Um, so the tutors, I'm actually going... So, okay, so there's two tutors here. Um, and the reason why there, there are two tutors um, and why I felt that it was valuable to have tutors, not only are tutors amazing, but there actually exists um, an infinite combo in this deck. Uh, um, in addition to other combos that you can combo with Beacon of Immortality with something like um, Sanguine Bond or Defiant Bloodlord, combo that with Beacon of Immortality and you basically just one-shot somebody. But um, Exquisite Blood comboed with Sanguine Bond um, with any sort of damage happening actually results in an infinite combo where you kill everybody. So, there are two tutors in here. Um, whether or not you want to actually use that combo, I... I maybe if maybe if you really want to close out the game but to me infinite combos go against the spirit of commander um i would i despise decks that actually go for the infinite combo win because that's such an unfun like i win button that you just press that it's just it's just not good in a casual setting and competitive sure but um when you're just playing with your friends you know infinite combo on turn you know 6 Meh, like, I don't know. Um, Beseech the Queen, though, is our, basically, a, th a tutor for three black. So, search your library for a card with converted mana and cost less than or equal to the number of lands you control. Reveal it, put it into your hand. So, it's a nice three-cost tutor uh, for the late game when you have a bunch of lands out. And, excuse me, Diabolic Tutor is a four-cost average tutor effect, basically. So, um, our misc here is Chalice of Life. Probably the most underwhelming card until you realize that it has a flip effect. So tap to gain one life for three colorless. Then if you have at least 10, 10 life more than your starting life total, transform it. Now this is pretty much going to always happen and I would only save the, I would save this artifact and play it when you actually can trigger it to flip it, which is the Chalice of Death target player loses five life. So you can go ahead and ping somebody for five life every turn. Um, and that's amazing. Lightning Greaves and Swiftfoot Boots are staples of the commander format and are good to combo with your um, commander if it's a really big fatty or any of these other beaters. Um, gives him hexproof so he stays around a while. And Wound Reflection I covered a little bit before. Um, this card is insane and for for six mana it's pretty expensive, a little bit vulnerable and pretty much a big target for enchantment removal but otherwise if it can stick around the effects of this card are awesome. And then we move on to our finishers for the deck. Uh, these are the cards. Debt to the Debtless is the most bomb card in this entire deck. F uh, two white, two black X. Each opponent loses two times X life. You gain like equal to life loss this way. So ideally, ideally you play this in the super, super late game with 12 mana. You blow your entire mana for this card. Um, so if, let's say you spend 12 mana, all right, you're paying um, X is 8 here, so each opponent loses 2 times X life, so that's, so each opponent is going to take 16 damage, and you gain life equal to life loss this way, so in a 4 player game, you're going to, you're going to, uh, go up, uh, 16 times 3 life, which is, uh, if I do my math right here, I believe that's 58, 16 times 3, I don't have a calculator on me, and I'm doing math in my head and trying to talk at the same time, so if that's wrong, I'm sorry, but I think that's 58, um, no, 48, 48. One, one of the two. Anyway, this card is bomb. That's the point I'm trying to make here. This card is amazing. Use it in the late game. Exsanguinate is another card, except without the twice effect. So Exsanguinate is going to gain you a ton of life. So again, all of these cards combo with things like um, Sanguine Bond and stuff like that, where you can start pinging people for massive amounts of damage and when you gain life. Um, and then we have Profane Command as an extra utility card. I had a Death Gra Death's Grasp here, um, but Profane Command has so much versatility um, that I had to include it. So uh, you can pretty much burn somebody for X life. Um, you can recur something, you can basically kill something, or you can make your creatures unblockable effectively. Um, so these are all the burn cards. So all of these cards are... Um, just amazing, and I think that they sort of synergize really well with the whole theme of the deck. This is an absolute Orzahov deck, if I've ever seen one. Um, this is exactly how I would expect the Orzahov to operate as this sort of council who taxes people for life, um, and they stay immortal because of that tax. 
uh, meaning that you are gaining all of this life off of all of your opponent's life loss. Um, so if we move on, if we move down here briefly to the maybe options, um, I had a really hard time cutting cards to fit the 100 requirement from this deck. And um, if anything, the top five cards that I had the most trouble actually cutting were Death's Grasp for Profane Command. Uh, Peacekeeper is super nice for a to fit into the production category, but it's ten, it's nine dollars, um, so I'm not sure about that. Thran Dynamo, a, amazing ramp card, uh, but it's six dollars again. Had to keep the price down a little bit, and then the Soul Sisters actually are really nice because. Um, they actually build Karlov super fast, but I just feel like in in Commander, um, they don't do enough. So the thing is, they have to be they have to be um, on the battlefield with Karlov to actually be useful enough to fit into a Commander deck. Otherwise, I'm not entirely sure that they're worth it to be to be included in the deck but again it's in the top five for a reason these cards would be amazing with Karlov on the field you would grow you would grow Karlov so fast um, and then we have a myriad of other maybe options here between just card draw cards um, uh, shadows of the past was a good one to um, let's see what else is here uh, ultimate price maybe as removal um, Doomblade is another removal, but um, yeah, that's that is um, my tax tax season uh, Orzhov Commander deck here for one hundred and six dollars approximately as of the recording of this video. Um, by the time this video is actually uploaded, I expect that price to drop a little bit, so I'd expect it to be around one hundred and fifty, maybe one forty-five by the time that you actually see this video. Nice curve here and very synergizing cards. So I think this deck is very solid. I actually, um, well, and yeah, it's very solid deck, and um, that's pretty much all I had for this video. So I would like to ask you guys to leave a rating on the video if you did enjoy it. Subscribe if you enjoy my content on this YouTube channel. And um, if you really, really like me, then perhaps consider disabling adblock for YouTube because uh, ad revenue is the lifeblood of YouTubers and um, we all would appreciate it. So anyway, that is the video for today, guys. Thank you all for watching again and I will see you all in the next video.